I really don't hope it's raining in here. <laughs> Someone, get the maintenance man. <laughs> What's up everyone, welcome to another drag video. In today's video, we will be doing the 2015 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. So this is the main opponent for the Ford Mustang. And if you're not familiar with this car, it has a 6.2 liter Hemi V8 in it. And guess what? It is supercharged. So this is going to be my first car that I'm going to be tuning that has a supercharger and not twin turbos or a big turbo to say. So let's quickly run over. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Let's quickly run over everything I have done to it. So let's quickly go to upgradings, um, custom upgrades. And right over here, I just want to tell you guys that I'm doing something new on my channel. I'm only tuning the stock engine. If you want to see me tune a different engine such as this V12 over here, let me know in the comments below. I'll have that video out for you guys within a week. Going over, yeah, as you guys can see, we've got the stock engine in. For the drivetrain, we are still on rear wheel drive. And for the body kit, we actually went with the wide body kit. So just to let you know that the wide body kit is a little bit heavier than the stock body kit. Obviously, it's going to show more here because I've done the weight reduction to this. So if you want to do better times than me, just don't put it on. I just think that, well, I just thought and think and still think that this looks freaking amazing. Going over the engine, we have installed literally everything to max but the oil coolers. And I will show you guys quickly now why I did not do it. And an interesting fact, this is a 6.2 liter with a fully bored out uh, block. It's a 6.5 liter. So quickly going over there, race. And here is the supercharger. Okay, going for the flywheel, going for the intercooler. So here's the only thing, the oil cooler. So if we had to install this, it's going to give us 7 kilowatt. But look at the weight. It weighs 1,556.10 without us 1,538. So how much is that? That's, two, that's 18 kilograms more weight for 7 kilowatt of power. So that doesn't feel right to me. So I should say, no, we're not going to install it. Going over the handling, we have got the biggest brakes installed, we got race handling, we have got race anti-roll bar front and the rear. Going over to the roll cage, we didn't, we didn't install it at all because it just adds 59 kilograms, doesn't really give any other benefits. Going over, we've got the race, uh, the race weight reduction installed and for the drivetrain, we have got the race clutch, we have got the 6-speed race transmission. Going over the driveline, we have the race driveline and race diff. Let's quickly go down to tires. We have got slicks. We have got the mini biscuits in the front. And we have got the big brothers at the back. It, they almost look similar, don't they? I mean, like, look at that. Obviously, it's probably going to be a little bit of a difference. No, the rear is a bit bigger. Okay, and then for the rims, you can literally go to any rims. Just make sure they are the lightest rims. And for the rim size, we don't do it. This just adds unnecessary, unnecessary weight. And for the aerodynamics, even though I like this one, it just adds weight. So I'm just going to keep it at stock. So let's quickly run over the tune. So for the tune, because this car is rear-wheel drive, we don't want any tire pressure at the back. This is going to help us a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot with traction. And also, uh, for the front, we actually increase the tire pressure all the way to the top. This is obviously going to allow less drag and is going to help us with top instability as well. For the gearing here, it is. We actually had to take this final drive all the way to the left. I think we started at, is it this car or another car that I tuned? I think... We started this car at like 3.5, so we took it down to 2.8. That is a lot if you're not familiar with gearing tuning. And then also we balanced all of them out. This car had a big problem from first to second gear again. The first gear, as soon as it hooks, you need to shift to second gear. The second gear spins, and while it's spinning, you gotta shift to third gear. So we actually balanced it out. But I just want to show you guys something. It's at 2.55. If you look at our acceleration and speed, for 0 to 100. It's 1.173. This was even less because the second gear was all messed up. Let's quickly go to 330. Wait, that's too much. Uh, 300. 
Look at that, it's already better if you make your second gear uh, to be a bit shorter. But I'm telling you guys, it's horrible. You don't want to drive a car like this because your third gear is going to come, your car is just going to bug. Blech. Unless you maybe want to go with a, a bigger gearbox that has got more gears in it. But a proper shift is here at this one. Wait, was I wrong now? Hold on, hold on. 300 to 90. 131, yeah, no, 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 it, it's definitely, yeah, there we go, 255, so even though the 0 to 100 is a bit more, the car feels much better, and even if your times is better than this, it doesn't necessarily mean your car is faster than mine, theory is always different to when it comes to practical, um, going over to the alignment, we have got the front camera at 5 degrees, this will actually angle your your entire wheel outwards, so you won't be driving off your, on your wheel flash. You'll just be driving on like the corner of the wheel, which will allow less drag. Kind of interesting, right? And then going over the rear, it is 0 0.6. Reason for this is because whenever your car does pull away from standstill, your nose will lift up, your rear will go down, and as it's pressing your rear suspension down and everything compresses, a positive camber can actually go into a negative camber because of everything just compressing at the back and the weight pressing it down and the power and all of these things. So putting it a little bit in the positive is actually going to help you guys get better traction. If you're not sure how to do it, I did make a video of explaining how to do your own camber. I'll drop a card for you guys in the top right corner. So then we have got 0, zero and full at 7. Going over the anti-roll bars, we've got a max max. For the springs, our front springs is at its softest, and our rear springs is at its stiffest. It feels to me like this car, whenever the, even the, what do you call it, the rear springs is about three quarters of the way, it feels to me like the rear end just goes down too far. Like it really, really wants to pop a wheelie. So by just making it stiff, it feels to me like we're actually just launching and going instead of launching, trying to wheelie and go, if it makes any sense. Nevertheless, for the ride height, this car loves being freaking high in the sky for some reason. The front is a little bit lower than the rear, so as the front lifts up and the rear goes down, they should probably balance out at 0, 0. Okay, not literally 0 as in centimeters, at hopefully 16.1, 16.1. It's actually kind of pretty difficult, uh, or I'll 16 point. Yeah, what, whatever the case is, you guys get what I'm saying, because your front is lower, so whenever you pull away, it's going to lift your front up, and hopefully it's going to be the same as the rear, so we don't drive like the, 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 the Titanic. Going over the damping, as you guys can see, for the front, we have got it at soft, and for the rear, we have got it at soft. And then for the rebound stiffness, we've got the rear and the front at pretty much 60% or 70% all the way to stiff. So this is very good. This is a suspension you want to see. Your front and rear should be the same and your rear and front should be the same. Sometimes they do not match. It's not a try and smash, but in general, this is the first thing you want to actually try. Going over the aerodynamics, if you did install any aero downforce and stuff, just make sure they are at speed all the way to the left. For the brake, I only got it at 85 over a year. This just helps the wheels not to lock up so much. Going over the differential, we got 100 and zero let's quickly go to the road and do our 400 meter pull okay and here we are so with this car what you actually want to do is you just want to heat the wheels up just a little bit so a reverse and an accelerate there we go that should be more than enough let's just quickly line up the straight there we go okay so with this car you can actually use launch control you can choose where you want to launch. So with this car you want to launch at its minimum which is just above 2000 RPMs. If you're not sure how to do this, all you're going to do is hold in the handbrake, press the accelerator and it's going to bounce up. If it doesn't bounce up like mine did, just go to reverse, go to accelerate again and that is how you do it. So we're going to launch it and please give us a good time. <laughs> Come on, baby! Oh, and that was 253. Not bad at all. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this car actually gained a lot from tuning. Like, literally, a darn lot. I think we even got, like, through this trap speed, we got, like, almost 8 or 10 kilometers per hour faster, which is really, really impressive. 
So let's quickly head over and do our drag race. Let's quickly run over the difficulty and settings. So over here we can see traction and stability is off. We are shifting manual with clutch. This car is going to spin in first gear. What you can do to avoid it to get better times. As I just want to tell you guys that this tune is a bass tune. This tune was not specifically designed for this drag race. This tune was just designed for the normal street runs and pulls against your friend. So for this, unfortunately you can only pull away like in full freaking RPMs. You cannot use launch control sadly. So what you have to do is take your first gear and make it longer. Or what you can do is just go to your differential and drop this acceleration a bit. Nevertheless, let's quickly get it started. Oh, that's a pretty good start. How are we doing? Oh, it's a Mustang. The two rivals against each other. Can I catch him? Come on. No. No. Darn it. Okay, Mustang is faster. It's official. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's quickly see about how far he won me. We had a lot of wheel spin in the front. I even short shifted it, if you guys could have seen. My first gear can go up to somewhere in the 60s. Kilometers power and we shifted like at bottom 50s if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, there we go for GT500 2020 model 1. So there we go. Let's jump quickly out. We're going to like this guy's design. And anyway, guys, there we go. I do hope that this video helped everyone out. If it, if it did, please make sure to drop a big like. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you have found anything working better for you as, a, uh, as your tune, let me know in the comments below. I would love to like update it. And then obviously we all can have a better tune. Nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy it, found it informative, educational, or just entertaining, make sure to drop a big like. If you would love to support the channel, especially if you're new, hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe. If you want to see a similar video, hit the icon on the left. If you want to see one of my most recent videos, hit the icon on the right. And I'll see all of you legends in my next video. But for now, Peace out, everyone.